Welcome to this video where we're going to look at how we can get two different scatter groups in Blender to avoid each other in geometry nodes. So here I just have some um, rocks and some grass and you can see that as the grass approaches the rocks uh, they scale down basically and both of these are geonode scatter groups and essentially what we're going to look at doing is uh, adding this modifier which is the avoidance modifier um, and this this way we can either cull with this delete geometry node or scale the instances down when they get close to the rocks here. Now let's say you just have a system like this and you just want some cubes to avoid a sphere that you put down and I put it in a collection. In geometry nodes on this scatter group I can simply just drag in this collection and then realize the instances here, set this to relative and using the geometry proximity node, add in a scale instances node after we instance on points. Plug in the distance here, and you can see that wherever I put the cube, the instances get smaller where they're close to it. Um, the values are a bit messed up. You can see it's making them bigger when it's further away and stuff. So I'm just going to add in a map range node to control this and set the max to 1 there. And then you can sort of control the fall off distance here. Um, so this is a really simple way of doing this, and any objects that you add to this collection will um, affect the group in this way. This method is also in some ways better because it actually takes into account the shape of the mesh, and the method we're going to look at for doing this in with geometry nodes um, is just going to look at sort of a radius around a point. Uh, but at the same time, it's also going to be much more performant, so, you know, it's a, it's a give and take kind of thing. And you could essentially recreate this behavior with geometry nodes but um, I was hesitant to do it because I didn't want to slow down the scenes too much by realizing all the instances. If we had a lot of rocks and a lot of geometry it could really slow things down. So I just wanted to make something that was a little more performant. But yeah this is if, you, if this is all you need um, and say you just wanted this to be grass uh, scaling down by trees or something like that then you know this is a perfectly fine system to do for that. But where you're going to have many of these um, objects and you want to scatter them in a group of their own, it is very useful to use the method I'm about to show you. So here I have just a little demo file set up where I have this basic scatter group um, applied twice, once with cubes, once with spheres. I just have controls for randomizing the scale and for the density. And what I essentially want to do here is add in another group after this called avoidance and I want this group to delete out the cubes that are close to the spheres so um, it's a little bit of a process to do this but bear with me and hopefully it'll make sense but we're going to be using the geometry proximity node now in order to use this in our demo file here we need to separate out the cubes and the spheres somehow after they've all been merged together and with the end of the modifier stack so we need to somehow store an attribute that tells us whether or not we're looking at a cube or a sphere um, in the spreadsheet here. So right now we look at all these instances and they all look the same. There's no way to tell if we're looking at the cube or a sphere. So in this category, what I'm going to do is store a named attribute and we're going to have to manually input a name for each one of our scatters. Now I'll drag in an input to this um, name socket here and I'll set the type to be boolean because what this will now do is allow us to create a new attribute per scatter that is unique to that scatter and that stores a value of 1 for all the objects in that scatter and a value of 0 for everything outside it. So I'll just tick this value box here and now if I call our scatters what they are, so cubes and spheres, and this is really the only manual work you have, you'll have to do in this method. Now in our avoidance group, if I read in a named attribute and I'll make an input for this too and I'll call this spheres and then I'll make another input and I'll call this one cubes. Now if I use the viewer node and set this to instance and view what we're looking at here you can see the spheres attribute all have values of one where there are spheres and the cubes have values of one and then the spheres are zero. So we've managed to mask out the different scatters we have going on and this will work for any number of scatters that you have in the stack. I want to add in a geometry proximity node. 
This node only has three modes of operation, points, edges, or faces, and our instances are none of those at the minute. Um, the closest thing they are is points, so I'll set it to points, and we can actually convert them to points. If we type in instance to points, we can basically undo that instance thing we've done, get them back in their point form, like this. Um, but right now, we need to separate them out so we can view the cubes and the spheres separately. So we have our masks here. So what I'm gonna do is just use a delete geometry node, set to instances, and then in the stream here, I'll just plug in one of these attributes. And now you see we have all our cubes. And then I'll add another delete geometry node, the same input. And then I'll plug in the other attribute, uh, set these to Boolean too, that's, that's a bit cleaner. And now we have our spheres and we have our cubes. Uh, we also want to remove the floor plane from this because it's just going to make things messy. So at the start of the group, I'm gonna, just going to use a separate components node and then just plug instances into these delete geometry nodes. So nice, we've got them both separated out. This means we can use the proximity node on them now. So we need to convert our spheres to points first so we can measure the distance to them. Instance to points. I'll plug the geometry proximity node after this. And then if I view the cubes here with the distance set here, and I set our viewer node to instance, you can see we get these little pockets of um, lower values close to where we have our spheres. So this is great. This is basically what we want. Um, this gives us a mask telling us how close the cubes are to the sphere points. So now I can just add in another delete geometry for after our cubes here, plug that into the selection and you'll see we get basically the opposite of what we want. So I'm gonna do a little bit of comparing on this distance node and I'm gonna say if it's less than some threshold, delete the points because distance gets closer to zero as we get closer to where the spheres are. So I'll set this to some random value for now just leave it like that. And now if I view the output and I join the spheres back onto the end of this group with a join geometry node, plug the spheres back in, you can see now wherever we have a sphere, we delete in a constant radius around them. So if I uh, play with the scale of the spheres, you see the cubes don't move away from them or change in any way. So this is not what we want. We basically want to say if this point is really small, bring the cubes in closer. If it's big, bring them out further. And um, we don't have any of that control at the minute. And um, we'd have to do that sort of manually, but even then we couldn't control it per, per sphere. So we basically want to also transfer information into this node group about the radius of the spheres. Now, in order to do that, we're gonna to have to go back into our scatter group, and we're basically gonna to have to do a very similar thing to what we've done here, where we're storing a Boolean value. Instead of a Boolean value, we're just gonna be storing a radius. So what I'm gonna do is make a bit of space, and I'm gonna store a named attribute, and this time I'm gonna set it to float, because it's gonna be our radius value, it's just a regular number. And now for the name, um, we could input another name manually, but we don't really want to do that. So uh, another trick that we're going to use is use the join strings node. And we're basically just going to append onto whatever our scatter name is, underscore radius. And that way, we'll be able to make another attribute sort of automatically without having to manually type out the name for it. So I'll just add in a string node here. And make sure you don't use this top input. And I'll call this underscore radius and plug this in after our name goes in. So all these cubes have now an attribute called cubes underscore radius and all the spheres have an attribute called spheres underscore radius. And we just want to store whatever the output of this random value is as our radius there. So that's what we're plugging into, into the scale here. So now back in our avoidance group, we now should have all the data we need. We just need to read it back in. So we our spheres are the top input here. Um, so I'm just going to add in another named attribute node, set it to float. And now we just want to recreate that um, name. So we'll just use the join strings again. And we'll use a string. Join our name into the top there. And then plug this in below it. And put an underscore radius. 
and then plug that into our name. And now if I view this points node, these are our sphere points. If I plug in the radius, you can see they match what we, um, they match perfectly the radius of the actual instance spheres. So now we can basically just use this information to control this B input. Right now we can't just plug this straight in because the attribute of the sphere radius doesn't exist on the cubes. So now we need to somehow transfer the attribute for the sphere radius onto the cubes. And the way we want to do this is by saying for each cube, look at your closest sphere and inherit the value of its radius. What we're going to do is after this instance to points node, we are going to make a bit of space for ourselves here and we're basically going to transfer the attribute. So in old versions of Blender, that was the transfer attribute node. Now it's a couple of, um, a couple of nodes. We need the sample index node and we need the sample nearest node. So if I plug this in, in its own little section here, after the points, plug the points into both inputs, and then I plug the index into the index, and then I plug our attribute into the value here, so our sphere radius attribute, that will do exactly what I just said. For each cube, it will look at its nearest sphere and inherit the value for the radius. So if I view this, make sure view is set to instance, you can see we get this sort of, um, weird looking pattern but this is actually what you'd expect because we're just looking at the nearest points the nearest spheres on each point and inheriting the radius and sometimes the radius is big and sometimes it's smaller so it's darker um, and that's pretty much it so now we can use this in our b input here so if i just plug that straight in um it looked like everything stopped working for a minute. It's just because the range of values isn't quite what we want. We need to add in a small offset. So I'll just add in something like 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Now if I play with the scale seed on the spheres group, you can see that the cubes will grow or shrink to fit them. The value in here you can sort of use as your little like um, offset value. So it can actually be defined as an input here. And then I'll name our to input names a little bit more intuitively. So I'll call this group obstacle and I'll call this um, to avoid obstacle. The last thing you need to do at the end of all of this is at the end in this join geometry, just join in mesh for to get your floor plane back. So I was just looking at making this scene with some grass and some boulders, um, all from Polyhaven. Um, and basically what I was running into was the deletion method wasn't what I wanted in this scenario. Um, it was just, I didn't want this sort of hard line around where the boulders were. I wanted a nice sort of fade. And to do this, um, I just replaced uh, the delete geometry with a scale instances node and a map range node here. So I just put the distance into the value and then this add value into our from max. And now you can see the grass scales down smaller where it gets closer to the boulders. I could also invert this to make the grass get bigger where it's closer to the boulders. Um, but that's not really what I wanted for this effect. I wanted it to be a little bit smaller. But I also wanted to add that you could then store this attribute as a named attribute here. Just uh, probably like right at the end after this join geometry node. I'll just plug this value into here and just call this mask. And now I can use this in the shader. Um, so say I wanted to make this material more rocky where it was by the boulders and then more grassy where the boulders weren't, I could now do this as well. Um, so if I go into the shader editor, I just have this little PBR setup. Um, I'll add a mix shader, attribute node, mask, plug that into the factor. And now if I add in a principled node and if I just uh, set this to be a green color like that and then i add a color ramp you can see we're sort of getting a mix between them and i could control the sort of fall off with this color ramp and now you see that where we're underneath the grass with this green color it's way too bright at the minute and you'd probably want to set up you know some proper grass textures on this but yeah but this is just to demonstrate how you might use this mask um for more than just culling geometry and just before I finish off, I thought I'd just quickly demonstrate how you can make this more accurate, like I showed you at the beginning, um, with 
realizing the instances instead of doing this instance to point stuff. So in some ways it's a bit simpler. So for now I'm just going to disconnect what I have. And if I just take, say, our rocks here and realize them, it converts them from instances to vertices. And now what I want to do is just run this through a geoproximity node. I'll set this to faces this time because we're working with real geometry. And then I'll just plug the distance into the scale through a map range node. And you can see, you can sort of maybe change this to smooth. And we get the result that we want. It's a bit more accurate and it is a bit simpler. We don't have to do any of this math, but it is much slower on your scene. So just be careful when you do stuff like this, especially if you're using rocks like these, which are quite high poly. Um, if you add too many, your blender's probably not going to be able to handle it. But yeah, it is a, a little more accurate, definitely.